Here's information that you can put in after the author. So let's look at this example here. Hugh, comma, Manuel. So Hugh is the last name, Manuel is the first name. Kiss of the Spider Woman. So that's the book name. Translated by Thomas Kolke. And first name first, last name last. This is the translator, comma. The publishing company is Vintage Books and the year is 1991. So that's pretty straightforward. Joyce, Mitch, Michelle, Michelle Joyce. So yeah, Joyce is the last name, Michelle is the first name. Other mindedness, the emergence of network culture, University of Michigan Press, 2000. Actually, this here should also be italicized. The Emergence of Network Culture. So this is the name of a book, and it's from University of Michigan. P, what, what does P mean? Press. That is one of the abbreviations MLA allows you to use. How about the title here? We have some title uh, capitalization problems, and this is always very confusing. And it's important to remember that when you get your article, you can look at the actual PDF or the actual paper and look at the way the title is, is capitalized right there. That's the way you should follow. That's the way that's correct. Be careful when you're grabbing information from a database again or you're just downloading information, putting it into Zotero or, or EndNote. Lots of times that capitalization gets lost and you're left with no capital or all capital. Sometimes I've downloaded papers, put them in the database and it's all capital, which is clearly quite wrong. You need to look at it firsthand and think about it. But let's go ahead with some general rules we can use for capitalization. That is, if I don't have the original paper right in front of me or I'm just looking over quickly my reference list, what is the rule for this? Well, we can use the MLA some general rules. The first word in a title and the last word in a title should be capitalized. The principal words, that is the key words, including words that follow hy hyphens. That is, if you have a word that has a hyphen in it, you can al you also go ahead and capitalize that. So if I was to say something like, dark hyphen light. Why do I put these words together? I don't know, maybe my research has dark light in it. Well, here I have capital D, then here I should also have capital L. That's this idea of capitalization after hyphen. If the word D was capitalized, if the word D was not capitalized, then in that case you would not capitalize the L. You keep it the same. So those are kind of a general rule of thumb. First word, last word, and principal word. What are some more words you can capitalize? You should be capitalizing nouns, for example, flowers, like the flowers of Europe. Pronouns, are, as in save our children, because it's a it's pronoun. It, as in some like it, hot. Verbs, like watches as in American, America watches television, like looking at television. Is, as in what is literature, it's a, a verb. Adjective, ugly, as in the ugly duckling. Adverb, like slightly, as in only slightly corrupt. Or a word like down, as in go down, Moses, subordinating conjunctions like after, 
although, as if, as soon as, because, before, if, that, unless, until, when, where, while, for example, one if by land. This as if idea. Okay, so these are all that you should be capitalizing. What about what you should not be capitalizing? Don't capitalize these. Things like words, uh, words like a uh, and the, unless it's at the beginning. Remember that. If it's at the beginning or the end, the last or the first word, you must capitalize it. But if it's not the beginning and it's a uh, and the, you do not capitalize. For example here, under the bamboo tree. Prepositions, against, as, as between, in, of, to, for example, the merchant of Venice, right? The merchant of Venice. It's of, right there, should not be capitalized. Of. Or here, a dialogue between the soul and body. Don't capitalize those. Do not capitalize coordinating conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions include, oops, let me get my coordinating conjunctions back here. And, but, for, nor, for, so, yet. And here's an example, Romeo and Juliet. Two, don't capitalize two in an infinitive. For example, how to play chess. The title of a part of a larger whole is placed inside quotation marks. So we just finished this capitalization idea, but what about when you have the name of the article inside quotation marks, like in this case here? Here's a nice reference. Dewar, James A. and Peng Hua Ang. So pay attention there, right? Very quickly. Last name first. First name last. Middle initial. Good. Comma. That comma tells us first name is last. N A N D. Hung Huang Hua Ang. Now, this is a little bit confusing, isn't it? We know that Hung is the family name, don't we? And we know that Hua Ang is the first name or the given name. Sometimes in Chinese it may even be hyphenated. There's a hyphen. Some people use hyphen. So how do we write this? Well, MLA and APA are a little bit confused about this. This is a problem because Chinese names are already reversed, aren't they? In this case, Peng, Hua, Ang. Now, how do we write this name? Well, the compromise is look at the author, how they write their name in the paper or the book you're citing. How do they do it? In this case, this person wrote their Chinese name in the normal Chinese way, which is Peng Hua Ang. So in MLA, we write the second author in the normal way it's written. We do not reverse it. However, if this person was the first author, then we would be reversing it, which becomes extremely confusing, doesn't it? Because now we would say, if Peng Hua Ang was the first author, we would move it around, and now it would be Hua Ang, comma, Peng. Okay, well, it's a hard one to solve, but that's the way it is. You need to look at the way the author uses their name normally. Let's continue back here. I kind of got off track there for a second. Quotation marks. What are the quotation marks for? Because this is part of something bigger. This is the name of an article or the name of a chapter, the cultural consequences of printing and the internet. It is inside something bigger. That bigger is agent of change, print culture studies after Elizabeth L. Eisenstein. And it's edited by Sabrina Alcorn Barron et al. 
So this is one person, first name, middle name, last name, at all means there's more than two editors edited by. Who published this? U of University of Massachusetts Press, B Press, or Printers Press, slash Center for the Public, comma, Library of Congress. Where did we get this from? That should be from the inside of the first or second page, the copyright page inside the book. What's the year it was released and what are the pages? What are these pages? 365 to 367. Note there we wrote 77. That means 377. That is the chapter. The chapter begins on page 365 and the chapter ends on page 377. And who wrote the chapter? The chapter was written by Duer, James, and Hung Hua Ang. Now, this quotation marks here tells you that it's a smaller part of something bigger. I understand that. But pay, pay attention now to our main point, which is capitalization. How do we know what to make capital? And this is quite different from APA. In APA, their rules are lowercase. But here in this case, we're going to follow the capitalization of the source material. So the easiest way to do this is look at the source material and see how do they capitalize it. And if you still are unsure, then use the rules we just looked at, which would be the first and the last for sure, and the noun and the pronouns, and then we go through there and check all the different ones. The easiest is just look at the source. Euripides, The Trojan Women, 10 plays translated by Paul Rorsch, New American Library. Now in this case, we have Euripides is an author. This is a kind of classical book. The book's title is The Trojan Women, 10 plays. There's a translator. There's not an, there's not a, a, we have the author here, but we don't have more in the author because this is an ancient book with just one name. But it is translated, because it was not originally in English, by Paul Roche, comma, New American Library, which are the publishers. And it came out in 1998. And the part we are citing is this part here. What about journals, newspapers, which we call periodicals? Periodicals are journals, or newspapers, or magazines. Well, let's begin here. We've got Goldman, which is last name first and first name last, and. Then we have a period, quotation mark. What does the quotation mark tell us? That this is a smaller part of something bigger. Questions of transport, watch those capitalizations. We are following the capitalization of the original material. Here's a colon, no space before, one space after, and then a capital right there, reading. And then we have the period and the quotation mark closing. No space before, one space after. This is inside of a journal. The journal's name is the Georgia Review. And again, the capitalization, we follow the source material. We capitalize it the way they did. Comma, volume, lowercase v. Period, space, 64. Comma, number, period, space, one. This is the volume number, the issue number and then the year 2010 and it is how many it is multiple pages 69 to 88 so there you go you can see that the special rule here is that you capitalize the way that the source is capitalized both on the article level chapter level and the book journal level you copy the source material that's easy to remember but sometimes i have to tell you it's very hard to do because, as I say, sometimes you've written it down, but you don't have it right next to you to see it. You go, oh no, I wrote it down in lowercase, I forget what the capitalization is. Well, at least with the internet, you can look the book up and try to find its actual capitalization.